Hi, I'm Trent Lippery. I'm a senior data scientist at Wayfair, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about handling imbalanced data. First, let's define imbalanced data. My very informal definition is when you have a significant difference in the frequency of outcomes. The easiest example of this is when you have two outcomes, or binary classification. And we have two specific examples of binary classification with highly imbalanced data right here. The first of which is fraud detection. Most orders are non-fraudulent, and a very small subset are fraudulent, but those are very important. So obviously we need to predict fraudulent orders, but we still have imbalanced data. Another example is churn prediction, when you're predicting a customer's unsubscription from a service. Uh, customers not doing anything, which means not unsubscribing, is far more common than a customer actually unsubscribing. So this is another example of handling imbalanced data. So what are the specific ways we can handle imbalanced data? There are three common techniques for this. These are undersampling, oversampling, an example of which is smoke, and defining a custom loss function. First, let's talk about undersampling. So imagine we have an imbalanced data set like this one right here. Blue represents our minority outcome, and brown represents, I'm red, green, colorblind, brown represents our majority outcome. If we have a really big data set and we don't necessarily need to use the entire data set to train our model, then what we can do is remove a portion randomly of our majority outcomes so that we have a much more balanced data set. So this is undersampling. Another technique that we can commonly use is oversampling. This right here. Standard oversampling uh, keeps the entirety of the majority data set, but what we do is we repeat samples of the minority set over and over. So we would randomly choose one of these data points to train on. And we would uh, repeat these data points over and over and over until we have a ratio that makes the data more balanced. The other oversampling technique we wanted to talk about was SMOTE. This stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. And the reason it's synthetic is because we're creating synthetic points for the minority outcome. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. And here we have a data set that's highly imbalanced. Uh, we could say, for example, that the orange crosses represent non-fraudulent orders, and these blue triangles represent fraudulent orders. So we want to predict if orders are non-fraudulent or fraudulent, and we're going to use SMOTE to train a model to do that. Clearly, we need to create multiple new synthetic fraudulent cases so that our model can effectively predict this. So how do we do that? We start by choosing two hyperparameters. R and K. R represents the ratio of our final data set that we want um, between the minority and majority case uh, after we've performed SMOTE. So as an example, let's say that we have 100 non-fraudulent orders and we only have one fraudulent order. If our final ratio is 0 0.5 or a 1 to 1 final ratio, then we know we're going to need to create 99 new synthetic points so that we have a balanced data set. So that's R. The other hyperparameter is K, and that chooses the number of nearest neighbors we use when we create the synthetic data points. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Now that we've defined N, which in this case was 99, we're going to iterate through a for loop n many times. And the first thing we do is randomly choose one of our minority case points. So looking at this data set, we can randomly choose this value and set this to x. This is the current point we're interested in. And then we can get the k nearest neighbors of this as set by that hyperparameter. So if we look around at this data point, clearly um, this and this are nearest neighbors, and let's just assume that k is 2. So we have our two nearest neighbors. So now we're going to randomly choose one of these nearest neighbors. Let's randomly pick this one. So I'm going to erase this. And now we have x, this point here, and y, this point here. Now we want to iterate through each of the dimensions in our data set space. Fortunately here, we just have two dimensions, i and j. 
So let's look at the dimension i first. What we're going to do is sample a value alpha in the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. So maybe we get 0.75 as our first alpha value. And then we're going to create, start to create our new synthetic point by taking the distance between our x and y and then getting alpha percent of that. So here is our new point, xi tilde. This is the i dimension of that. And how we got that was we just took the x dimension of our x point, or the i dimension of our x point, and then we added alpha times the distance between these two points. So we're iterating through each dimension of our data set, which means we also need to look at this dimension, the j dimension. Once again, let's pick alpha. Maybe we get 0.25 this time. And then we add alpha equals 0.25 plus the x point um, plus times the distance between these two values. And now, since we've iterated through both the dimensions and we've set the x tilde dimension or value in both those dimensions, we can create this new synthetic point. What's nice about this is that we've created a synthetic point that's very close to our minority cases, and it's almost in between those two. Um, we're then going to iterate over this process that we just ran through, and many times, until we have a bunch of synthetic points. And then we can train our model. The last way we're going to talk about handling imbalanced data is through a custom loss function. This is essentially when we change the weights in our loss function to account for the imbalance of data. The easiest way to understand this is through a log loss function. So if we look at a normal log loss function, we're taking negative 1 times this whole value, where this whole value um, is defined as x, which is our true label, times log of p, where p is our prediction, and then we're adding to that 1 minus x times log of 1 minus p. And I find that it's easiest to understand the intuition behind this formula when we actually walk through different examples of the true label and our predicted label. So let's start with the case where we have a non-fraudulent order and we predict that it's not fraudulent as well. So x here is 0, which means that this entire term is going to go to 0 because we're multiplying it by 0. So that drops out. We don't care. The next term is 1 minus x. The true label is 0, so this is 1 minus 0. All right, this term matters. So what's inside of here? We have log of 1 minus p. If our prediction in this case is 0, then we're taking the log of 1 minus 0. Now remember that log looks like this curve. So if we're taking the log of 1, the y value of that is just 0. So the total value of this is 0 plus 0, which means our loss is 0. That's great. That's exactly what we want. On the other hand, let's assume that the true value is 0, and we accidentally predict 1. We've just messed up. Well, the true value is 0, which means that this term in log loss will still be 0. That dropped out. But then we have this term where we're weighting it by 1, and we have the log of 1 minus 1. Now we're looking at something that's approaching negative infinity. But don't forget the negative sign outside here, so we have a massive loss. We can also walk through when true equals 1. We're just going to flip and deal with the other side. So if true equals 1, this x equals 1, which means this second term drops out. And then we have 1 times log of p. If p is equal to 1, then it's 1 times log of 1 which means that the loss is 0. But if p is equal to 0, that means it's 1 times negative infinity, once again, times negative 1. So we have a huge loss. So that's how we can understand the intuition between general loss, log loss functions. Now, how would we customize this if we have an imbalanced data set? It turns out this is actually very easy. The custom loss function, log loss function, is the exact same function with an a added to the first term, where a is just the ratio of how we want to balance these two outcomes. So say we care far more about 
accurately predicting when an order is indeed fraudulent, when p equals 1. So what we would do is make this a some value greater than 1, which means that if x equals 1, we have a truly fraudulent prediction, the loss term for an inaccurate prediction of our model is going to be much larger than, say, when we have a non-fraudulent order and we inaccurately predict that. And what that does is compensate for the fact that we have far fewer fraudulent orders than non-fraudulent orders. And that is introducing a custom loss function. So what have we learned today? Looking at handling and balanced data sets, we've learned the technique of undersampling, which is where we remove the majority case. And this is very convenient when you have more data than you need to train a model. We also looked at oversampling, which is where you repeat the minority case to create more examples of that so that the model learns to train on that. We also dove into smote, which is where we create synthetic minority points so that the model can train on those. And finally, we defined custom loss functions, where you change the weights of the two different outcomes so that your minority case has a larger loss weight. Thanks for listening. Check back again soon for more videos from Wayfair Data Science.